Welcome modelers. In this update I review why I do not like the trumpeter kit's way of attaching LED strips to light the decks, how I wired the B-deck lights, some math problems, and adding some fine detail to the B-deck. This is part 10 of my trumpeter 1 to 200 scale Titanic build series. To begin this video update, I found that I had a major light leak under part A12 where the forward superstructure sits at the forward well deck. And if you look here in the video, this here is part A12. And right here is where I had the light leak. So if you look at the picture where I have the C deck lit, you can see the light leak underneath part A12. So to solve that problem, I just used some black styrene plastic and I just cut it into small strips and then I glued them using some hot glue right behind part A12 and this here blocked out the light leak. So that solved that problem. Alright, just as a reminder the trumpeter lighting kit places many LED strips vertically. Many of the parts such as this part here which is part number V1 uh, they have built-in walls underneath where you mount the LEDs. So basically you'd take the LEDs and just mount them like this and that's how the trumpeter kit has you lighting the model. But the flaw with this method is that lighting hotspots will be created with the LEDs facing directly at the windows. So for my model, all of these walls are going to be cut off and then I'm going to take the LED strips and just put them flush onto the ceiling of the decks. And that way the light will shine down toward the floor and disperse the light evenly across the deck just as it would in a real ship and that should minimize the lighting hot spots. Alright, so here's a picture of the bottom of A deck part R1. This part serves as the ceiling to B deck where the B deck LEDs will be mounted. Now I want to mount the LED strips flush to the ceiling and the best place happens to be right on the inside of the LED mounting wall. So the first step for this superstructure B deck lighting is to cut this wall down. Then once I cut it, I sanded the small ridge that was left over, sanded it smooth and level. Then I added the LED strips using single density strips for the sides and front areas and a double density strip at the rear. I wired all strips to one circuit and to dim the circuit a little bit I added a 220 ohm resistor into that circuit. To help diffuse the light coming from the LED strips and make it appear that the model has individual rooms instead of a wide open space inside the model, I added sanded clear plastic strips around the perimeter of B-deck. Now I just used clear plastic sheets that are 30 thousandths of an inch thick and then from these sheets I just cut 12 millimeter strips and place them around the perimeter of the model. Now first I sanded the strips down with 150 grit sandpaper and then followed by 320 grit sandpaper to smooth out some of the scratches. Then I just attached these strips using hot glue and I just used little tack areas in various places so that I could secure these strips in place and not have to worry about them moving around and I just put them around the perimeter of B deck in various places and 
the end result is a nicely lit set of windows without seeing anything inside or seeing any lighting hot spots as the picture shows. Now at the back of B deck I did leave this open. Now this is the area where the second class smoking room is and it ran the whole width of B deck. And then right in front of that area here is the second class entrance area and it also ran the full width of B deck. So there's no reason to wall it off and make it look like it's uh, solid and filled with rooms. So that way if you can see into these windows here you'll see all the way across as if you would in the ship. Now the next step was to paint the floor and the ceiling white so they could reflect some of the light and help in the diffusing of the light. And just to do that I just used good old plain folk art craft paint and I just brushed this on, nothing real fancy, and that would help kind of reflect some of the light and diffuse it also. Alright, next up was to add some individual lights to the private promenade areas, the first class entrance areas, the cafe area, and some deck areas. I used the 402 SMDs for these areas except for the cafe and that's where I use these 805 LED strips. They're just real tiny little strips. And with tiny LEDs that just serve just right for some ceiling lights. And as you can see with the SMDs, they're very tiny. They make just perfect individual lights for the decks and ceilings. Now these 402 SMDs do come with resistors attached to them, pre-wired. But instead of having each SMD wired to a resistor individually, I decided that I was going to wire six SMDs to one resistor. The type of circuit will be what is called a parallel circuit. The problem, what resistor should I use for each 6 SMD circuit? Well, I did the math for a 9 volt system. And when I did the calculations, I came up with a 1 watt 50 ohm resistor for a 9 volt system. You know, to confirm the mass, I did some physical experiments using a multimeter to check the voltage and current. The problem was that with only a 50 ohm resistor, the six circuit SMDs ran too bright. The picture I showed at the beginning of this video not only shows the light leak that I had, but the deck lights were shining too brightly as well. So I had to determine the voltage I needed to light the SMDs at a brightness suited for this model. And that voltage came in at 2.65 volts without using a resistor. So now instead of boring you with uh, talking through this math and how I arrived at the resistor I needed, let's show a schematic here. So I have here drawn the 6 SMD circuit. It is a 9 volt circuit. I have all the components labeled, source voltage, the voltage drop required from the resistor. We've got the load and the desired voltage that we want to run that at. And that load also has a current that it will draw. We have over here the formulas that we need to figure out the resistor we want. A resistor has two specifications, the ohms and the watts. So, 
we need a resistor that's going to allow us to function this load at 2.65 volts from a 9 volt circuit. So 2.65 volts my, uh, subtracted from 9 volts is 6.35 volts. <clears throat> so we need a resistor which is a mechanism that one uses to drop the source voltage down to the desired voltage to run the load. So we need a resistor that's going to be able to drop the voltage by 6.35 volts. That resistor value is going to be V with a little R. Now we also have a load here that's running a certain amount of current and that current is going to be I with a little L. So looking at the formulas to figure out the ohms of the resistor you're going to take the voltage drop of the resistor divided by the current used by the load. And to figure out how much heat that resistor can dissipate, which is measured in watts, you're going to take the voltage drop of the resistor that you need times the current of the load that is being used. Now, through trial and error, by testing various resistors on this 6 SMD circuit, I found out that a 1500 ohm resistor drops the voltage down to 2.65 volts. Now I don't know what the current is that's drawing, being drawn from this load because my uh, power source only measures the uh, amps being drawn from the load down to 1 one hundredth of an amp. And when I was testing this at 1500 ohms and running at 2.65 volts, the power source read zero amps. So we know that this is drawing less than one hundredth of an amp. So I need to know what the current is in order to figure out what kind of watt resistor I need. So by just doing a reverse, little reverse math, I knew what the ohms was, and I knew what the current or the uh, voltage is. So by doing a little algebraic switching around, I figured out that the current being drawn with these values is 0 0.0042 amps, or 4.2 milliamps. Now knowing the current that I'm drawing from this circuit, I can figure out how much wattage or heat dissipation this circuit is going to create. So I just took the 6.35 volts times the 0 0.0042 amps and that gave me 0 0.03 watts. So a quarter watt resistor that has 1500 ohms of resistance in it is plenty. Now the second figure down here is what I came out with originally and I think the reason why I only came out with 50 ohms and a uh, 1 watt resistor was because I used maximum values. So here are the specs for the SMDs. The maximum voltage it can use safely is 3.4 volts and the maximum current it can use is 20 milliamps. So when you plug in the milliamps you have to take into consideration every single SMD and add them up. So that means 6 times 20 milliamps equals 0.12 amps that would be drawn in this uh, calculation that I did with maximum values. So that's how I arrived at 50 ohms and they don't have a 0.72 watt ohm. The next one up is a 1 watt so that's how I arrived at that and why it didn't really work because things ran too brightly. So hopefully this kind of gives you a little rundown. It's just a real quick rundown with a diagram. You can pause this and look at the figures 
and see how I calculated to use a 1500 ohm resistor, one quarter watt resistor that would run this circuit safely with a load running at 2.65 volts. All right, let's move on to the next step. Okay, now all the SMDs are in place. As you can see here in the back, I have six SMDs all in one circuit. I have two here at an entrance area in the back of the uh, B deck. I have two more here, and I have two more here. And they're all connected to one circuit. And I got them all wired into a nice little uh, fitting here. Here is the little strip comprised of the 805 LEDs for the cafe area. And for the front, I have two six circuit SMDs and got five SMDs here for the private promenade and the first class entrance area on both sides. And then I have one SMD right up here, right in front of the stairwell on both sides. So it gives me six on this side, six on this side for two more six SMD circuits. And then I just wired them also each to a connector. Now, in order to run the wires through the wall, what I did was I put little grooves in the wall. Wherever there was an SMD, I had to put some grooves in the wall so that they could run through there without getting pinched when I put the B deck on top. But this created some light leaking issues. So in order to block the light from those little cracks, I put little strips of that black plastic and then I put some hot glue around it and that stopped all the light leaks in all these areas that I had uh, the wires going through the wall. So that solved that problem. Then the next step was to just put some of the wood onto the A deck actually. Get that ready. And it just took a little time and patience to do. But that came out pretty fine. Nice and straight. No wrinkles. And then the final step in this lighting of the B deck, I added some details. Now when you look at the ship itself, you're going to see some of these beams underneath here. And all I used was just a point Zero two inch rod, this plastic rod, and I just cut them the proper length. And then I used some deck plans that showed how far these were spaced apart, how many there were. And I just used some of that uh, crystal clear glue to glue them down. And then after that set, I painted over these and that kind of acted as a little bit more of a gluing effect to these beams. So there's some beams up here in the front both sides and in the back area there's some beams as well. These you can probably be able to see if you look underneath the uh, A deck. But that adds a nice little detail to this uh, ship. Uh, the plans do show there is a beam here, but I don't think you can even see that, so I'm not even going to put that down. But those are the steps I did to light the superstructure at B deck. 
and here is the final result. I have the A deck floor slash B deck ceiling in place and I have all of the wires that connect the C deck and B deck lights hooked up to power source. So let's turn the power source on and you can see we're running around 9 volts and we're only drawing 0.12 amps for the entire C and B deck lighting. Now do an experiment here I put my camera on manual exposure and I cut the exposure down a little bit to see if we can get a better view of the deck lights. They still look a little bright but they're not shining like bright stars. Starting in the front here you'll notice that the part A12 area I don't have a light leak anymore. And at the front here we have the little SMDs that light that front section of B deck where the stairwell will be. And we have some nice diffused lights for the B deck area. And we're coming up here on the private promenade area and first class entrance area. You will notice that there are two colored lights coming from these SMDs. And that's because I made a mistake. I first started using some SMDs I had left over from another build and they were regular white SMDs and then I started using the soft white SMDs and so the regular white SMDs have more of a bluish color light and then the soft white have more of a yellowish type of color of a light but I didn't discover it quick enough I had a lot of wiring in so I just left it as is and that's the way it's going to be for now here we're at the cafe area and then we're coming back to the forward second class entrance area then we have the lights in the second class smoking room and then you can see some of the lighting right behind the second class smoking room but right in front of the another second class entrance area which is this section here so everything is lighting up pretty good well, that is the end result of the B deck superstructure lighting. So next up we're going to do the A deck lighting. So until that time stay tuned and have a great day.